You may have seen our previous videos about flushing RV water heaters. One featured our Suburban unit, which uses a steel drain plug. The back of the plug has a magnesium anode rod attached to it that sacrifices itself to protect the heater's steel tank. The other showed an Atwood heater, which uses a plastic drain plug. No anode is needed, since Atwood tanks are aluminum. Today, we'll be covering both brands in one video, with an important update for Suburban owners, plus a before and after internal inspection with a video boroscope to really understand what's going on inside the tank and confirm the effectiveness of our cleaning technique. Here are the tools we'll be using today. Enough white vinegar to fill the tank about halfway. We have a 12 gallon heater, so this 20 liters, which equals about five and a quarter gallons, will fill it about 45% full. A socket wrench with a short extension, a water heater tank rinsing wand, and a garden hose to connect to the city water supply. If you have a suburban heater, you'll need a new magnesium anode rod. We only use an original equipment rod to properly protect the tank. We'll also need a roll of plumber's pipe tape. If you have a suburban heater, you'll need a 3 quarter inch NPT drain plug. This is an important new addition to our toolbox, perfectly sized for suburban heaters. We'll explain why we need this shortly. We'll also want a pair of rubber gloves to protect our hands from hot water. We're using a boroscope to show what happens during cleaning. You won't need one of these to flush the heater unless you want to inspect yours too. Suburban anode rods require a 1 and 1 16th socket. The drain plug we'll be using requires a 1 and 1 8th inch socket. This Atwood heater is equipped with an aftermarket drain plug made by Camco that requires a 7 8 inch socket. You'll need a 15 16 inch if you have a standard Atwood plug. If you don't have the correct size socket, you can probably get away with an open end or crescent wrench instead. We'll put links to all of these supplies down below in the video description. We prepare the night before by turning off both propane and electric power to the heater, allowing it to cool overnight. The next morning, we turn off the city water supply and make sure the water pump is off. We'll remove the access panel to demonstrate on our suburban heater and start by opening the overpressure relief valve to release any pressure in the tank. Now leave it aiming straight out in the open position. Using the correct size socket, remove the drain plug. If you have a suburban unit like ours, the drain plug and anode are all one piece, so they'll come out together. Let all of the water drain out of the tank. While Atwood aluminum tanks don't require anode rods, suburban owners should expect their anode to look something like this pitted and worn, as compared to a brand new rod. But it's just doing its job of sacrificing itself to protect your steel tank. We replace ours every year, even if, like this one, it's not totally used up. It's a small price to pay compared to a new water heater. Before we do any flushing, let's take a look inside the tank with our boroscope. What we're seeing is lime scale fragments that have fallen from the heating element and elsewhere inside the tank and piled up on the bottom. This is what we'll be flushing out with the wand. Here's a look at the heating element with plenty of lime scale deposits still clinging to it. Keep in mind that we clean our tank out every year and buildup will vary depending on water conditions where you travel. So let's turn the water on to our tank rinsing wand and flush the tank out for a few minutes to wash it out. The initial rush of water will have the most debris in it. We wash it out until the water runs clear, usually about two or three minutes. So let's go back in with the boroscope to see how clean everything is now. The reason there's still so much debris in the tank is because the drain plug is so small and it's not positioned at the very bottom of the tank, preventing us from getting strong flushing action. When we look at the heating element, it's almost no different than before, since the wand can't break loose the lime scale that's still attached to it. Obviously, flushing until the water runs clear doesn't do much. Here's how to really clean the tank, using white vinegar. The acetic acid in the vinegar will dissolve the lime scale. Wrap about four or five turns of pipe tape around the plastic plug and install that in place of the anode rod. Of course, if you have an Atwood heater, 
use the plastic plug that you removed earlier. We used to just install a new anode rod and then add the vinegar, but we learned that acetic acid and magnesium react together, so they should never be mixed. We've never heard of it being a problem, but we've adjusted our procedure to avoid any potential issue, thus the need for the plastic plug. We always continue learning, and this is one of those details that's important to share. Now we'll flip the controls on our winterizing kit to draw liquid into the system. If you don't have a winterizing kit, you may need to remove the overpressure relief valve to add vinegar through a flexible funnel. We'll simply put the tube into each container, turn on the water pump, and draw the vinegar into the system. It goes directly into the water heater because the tank is empty, so it fills the only available void. When each bottle is empty, turn off the pump. After adding all four containers of vinegar, we fill one of the empty bottles with water. We then draw that into the tank to clear any residual vinegar out of the winterizing kit. Now we can put the winterizing kit away because we won't need it again. Turn on the city water connection to the entire RV. Because the overpressure relief valve is open and the water heater is only about half full of vinegar, the void in the tank is once again the natural place for the water to go. When the tank is full, it will begin coming out of the overpressure valve, so you can simply close it. Now turn on either the electric heating element or the propane burner to the water heater. Either way is fine. The purpose of heating the vinegar is to speed up the action of the acetic acid. We got a late start on this today, so we'll be finishing the job tomorrow morning, leaving the water heater on all night. To help reduce the amount of vinegar that seeps into the plumbing, we'll flip the water heater bypass valves for the night to isolate it from the rest of the system. First thing in the morning, we turn off the water heater, making sure both propane and electric are off, and turn off the city water inlet and make sure the water pump is off too. Wearing rubber gloves to protect your hands from the hot water and vinegar, open the overpressure relief valve. Be prepared for lots more spraying and foaming than usual due to the vinegar. Once the foaming subsides, leave the overpressure valve open and remove the drain plug. Even though it looks like I'm wearing a hazmat suit, you don't actually need one. It's just a raincoat because it's pouring out this morning. Stand clear and don't get burned as you let the entire tank empty out again. Time to flush with the wand until the water runs clear, which will probably take another two or three minutes. Now, the moment of truth, the post-vinegar boroscope exam. The difference is clear. While there's still some debris on the bottom of the tank, it's dramatically improved. Now, let's go have a look at the heating element. What a difference. It's like night and day, with hardly any lime scale left at all. We had the vinegar in from 5 p.m. until 9 a.m. the next day, or 16 hours. You can see that there's still a little bit of scale left, so we could have either used a higher ratio of vinegar to water, or left it in the tank longer. Results will vary based on how long it's been since you really cleaned your water heater and the water quality where you travel most, but this gives you an idea. We think we'll try pure vinegar next time, 12 gallons in our case, and see if we can't get the same results in half the time. In case you're wondering, we did try testing without heating the water, and it takes far longer. The heat really accelerates the action of the acetic acid dramatically. So now that our water heater is squeaky clean, we'll wrap some plumber's tape around the threads of a brand new anode, install it, and tighten it into place. Of course, if you have an Atwood heater, the plumber's tape will go on your plastic plug, which you can then reinstall. If you switched your water heater to bypass mode, be sure to set it back to normal operation or you won't be able to refill it. Turn the city water supply back on and wait for the heater tank to fill. As soon as it starts to come out the overpressure relief valve, flip the lever to close it again. Dry thoroughly around the anode or drain plug and check for leaks. Put your water heater cover back in place. The last thing to do is come inside and one by one, turn on every faucet and run the water up through both the hot and cold sides. Some vinegar will inevitably seep into the lines and running the water until it stops foaming will greatly reduce any residual odor. Lastly, it's a great time to check and clean your faucet aerators 
since some debris may come up through the system during water heater cleaning. By keeping your water heater clean, you're helping to prolong its useful life, and now you're all set for another year of RVing. Thanks for watching.